Hello and welcome to D2C Podcast. I'm Eric Dick. Today we're talking water with Santa Via's Matthew Goal. Santa Via is a revolutionary water filtration system that puts back some of the essential nutrients that market leading brands like Brita and Zero Water filter out while providing you with crystal clear, perfect water every time. We met the Santa Via team at our event in Las Vegas where they took the stage and braved a hot seat session with our speakers and audience. The advice we gave them that day has come to inform their new approach on their website and is paying major dividends as Santa Via grows aggressively on Amazon and through their retail presence. Listen to this podcast to uncover the marketing strategies that propelled Santa Via's water system to success, including how they mastered Amazon Marketplace, explored social media synergy, and leveraged analytics-driven campaigns. You'll hear all about the advice that we gave them in Las Vegas to make their product more results and benefits-driven. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I enjoy drinking Santa Via water. On with the show. I would go all in on influencers um, and some big influencers. Because we're an education product, it can be hard to get the message across to individuals. What we have found is that working with influencers who have a trusted audience, when you can work with that influencer and they internalize your message and they're aligned with you, that's the big thing. If you are if you find an influencer who truly likes your product and is aligned with you, it pays off in spades. We have some influencers that we, we have found. We'll work with 20 influencers and we'll have two that just like do an incredible job. And then we'll continue to work with those two influencers forevermore. And they just are incredible conversion machines. So I would go after a couple big influencers. That's what I would want to do. If you're a D2C brand on Shopify and you're not using Black Crow, then you're leaving significant revenue on the table. Black Crow uses your own data to help you identify customers returning to your site who would otherwise remain anonymous. The more customers you can identify, the more email and SMS abandonment messages you can send. You'll see incremental revenue almost immediately without having to change any of your existing flows. The best part? All it takes is a one-click integration. There's zero development work required. Head on over to blackcrow.ai slash DTC to get started with a free 30-day trial. Matthew, welcome to the D2C podcast. Give me the Santa Via story to start. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me too. I uh, really appreciate it. We love uh, D2C, the family. You guys are doing a great job for us, definitely. So, And I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit. But uh, yeah, good to be here. Um, so yeah, Santa Via, what do we do? So we're a mineralized water filtration brand. So the big difference between Santa Via and, say, a Brita, um, and, and that's what we do. We create these consumer water filtration products. But we're filtering contaminants like a lot of our competitors. But then we realize that actually it's just as important to add back those healthy minerals back into the water. So all of our filters have two stages, multiple stages. Um, the first stage, taking out the bad stuff like chlorine, lead, or whatever else is in your water. And then we add back calcium, magnesium, potassium. And what that does is it actually makes the water healthier for you. So your body uses those minerals for hundreds of unique processes in your body, but it also tastes a lot better too. So when you add calcium, magnesium, potassium, and just the right amounts and, and other trace minerals, it makes the water taste really good. So you don't have to have that terrible chalky taste that's uh, maybe bitter taste. It's smooth. It's, uh, it's crisp. And uh, that hopefully will get you and your family to drink more water. And drinking more water is actually one of the best things you can do for your health. Uh, it's, it's a super easy change to make. I know everybody is busy nowadays. Uh, we're working, we're running around. And uh, just making a simple change, drinking more water is super beneficial to your health. I've been on a drinking more water journey over the last three months. And it's, it, 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 is, it can feel like a chore to, to get <laughs> the amount of water that you need to get in you. Like, you know, I think I'm supposed to be having between three and four liters a day. It's yeah. something to do, you know, it's like a, a liter per, I forget how many, like 50 kilograms or something like that. Yeah, rule of but thumb like, is actually three liters for a woman and four liters for a man. So everybody's in between kind of that three to four liters. And if you try that, like it, it is, it can feel like a chore. Um, and not just that, but you'll be running to the washroom all the time. And it kind of feels, uh, you know, annoying. 
Um, so what I, I suggest is, but I've lost weight. My skin I mean, is better. You know what I mean? Like yeah, the, sure. there are real benefits from, from huge. it as well that you really, that you really see. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. And, and there's so many different, like if you go in and speak with a naturopath or your, or your doctor, uh, about the benefits of drinking more water, there are plenty. There's a ton of benefits of drinking more water, good water too. Um, and one of those, yeah, it is, it's weight loss and there's no, like, uh, nothing special or tricky about that. But when you're consuming more water, uh, there's a volume to it. And so you're basically killing the, the, those uh, snack cravings. And so drinking water throughout the day will actually help you to eat less, fewer calories, especially if it's just water, not water with sugar in it. Uh, so no pops, sodas, juices, things like that. Uh, just, yeah. There's plain old simple water. I'm really finding it's helping me with fat. I've really also adhered during this like hydration period to a 16-hour fasting window essentially mm -hmm. so i'm only eating for the for the remaining hours and i find that when i am yeah when i'm consuming a lot of water and i'm consuming it with with electrolytes i use a little sea salt or bio steel or whatever mm -hmm. but uh or lemon a lot of lemon in water as well it really helps me like not feel hungry or it helps me like mm -hmm. keep that fast more religiously which is helping me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean those are two great ways to try and lose weight is eating less you know uh choosing better foods to eat or just reducing your uh your eating window so intermittent fasting or, uh, yeah. And actually I think I was reading a book by Peter Atia, um, great author. He talks all about kind of health and longevity and he talks about one of the most effective ways to lose weight. If that's what your goal is, is actually to have the, those feeding windows. It's easier to stick to. You don't have to think about dieting, you know, you can eat the foods that you love, but you can only eat them from, you know, maybe <laughs> eight till eight. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's life fantastic. and health hacks. Totally. On this on this D 2 C podcast, uh, we're both drinking more water. I'm loving the Santa Via. I'm loving the Santa Via life. So, does the do the minerals get back, added back in in the filtration process? So it's just like one of the it's one of the layers in it that adds the calcium, that adds the magnesium, these other things. Yeah, it it does. Uh, they do, um, and very specifically, they have to get added after the filtration happens. Because as you can imagine, if you were to just mix in mineralization media, or you were to put that stage above the filtration stage, it will actually add in those healthy minerals. It will go through the filtration stage, and they'll get removed. And so, all of our filters first start with that filtration layer, and then they add. We add back in those healthy minerals. Um, and that's a downside of when, you know, if you're drinking a Brita or uh, maybe a zero water, um, is that all of these filters are actually removing any beneficial minerals that may, might be present in your water. So not only are you uh, not adding minerals back to the specific quantities that you would want in your water, but you might actually be removing any minerals that were present uh, prior to your yeah. filtration. So you're actually taking out things that are good for you. Um, and as you can imagine with filtration, you know, there's not, they're not smart filters. There's no technology, um, like that can basically say, oh, I'm just going to take out the chlorine and I'm not going to take out the calcium. These are broad mm -hmm. spectrum filters that are just filtering lots and lots of things from your water. And so it's really important, you know, do that filtration first, but you have to add back in those healthy minerals. It's, it's recommended by the world health organization, the government of Canada, health Canada recommends that you should be drinking it. Um, I know I have a friend of mine, he's, uh, he works for the De Department of Fisheries and Oceans in Canada, um, and he's often out on boats and they have these desalination water filters. They're basically sucking up seawater um, and it uses a reverse osmosis process and it leaves the water with nothing in it, just pure HTO. And they're actually not allowed to drink that. Health Canada says, no, you're not allowed to. They have to add minerals back to the water because by drinking demineralized water over an extended period of time, you're actually harming your body and you can lead to, it can lead to some nasty things like osteoporosis when you're, when you're older. Um, so just making a simple change, you know, choosing a water filter that's really designed for your health, for how your body works is, is key. And it's, it's really simple too. And that's, that's where Santa Via came in. Maybe I'll, I'll touch like a, a little bit on where, uh, you know, why we started. Um, so, are, it's a family business. I'm, I'm the son of uh, uh, David and Yvonne, um, and they started Santa Via back in 2008. And actually, the business started because of a health, a health issue. David had chronic acid reflux. And so they went to the doctor, and the doctor said, well, unfortunately, we're going to have to put you on uh, this medication called proton pump inhibitors. They essentially inhibit how much acid your, your uh, digestive tract, your stomach is producing. And that acid would come up, especially when David, while David was sleeping, uh, and you know, cause discomfort. It was actually a, a big quality of life uh, issue for him. 
And so, you know, they went away and they, they did some research and kind of thought to themselves, you know, there's no way that we're going to get sentenced with medication for life. I feel like this might be a lifestyle issue. Maybe if we change the things uh, that, that we're doing, we can actually get rid of this acid reflux problem, this GERD problem. Um, gastroesophageal reflux disease is what some some people call it. And it affects all of us. I mean, I've had it. I know uh, before, yep, you know, you I've had it, yeah. maybe you take a bender or something, uh, eat some bad food for a few days and you start to feel it too many chicken wings. Um, and so they did some research and found that actually there's quite a body of peer reviewed research that says if you change what you eat, what you're putting into your body, you change your uh, exercise habits and you drink more water. It's just as effective, just as effective as these PPIs, these proton pump inhibitors. And so they went on that journey and, uh, you know, going to the store was very accessible. They could change the types of foods that they were eating accessible. Um, exercise was a bit more difficult, took a bit of a kick in the pants. Uh, my mom's a great exerciser, but my dad, you know, not, not so much. Um, but he, he got to the gym. I think they, they got a PT, you know, and started, uh, uh, at least uh, starting to work on that. But water was one of those things they found quite difficult to find. There was a lot of mineralized water um, in bottled form, but not in a filter. And so it was expensive because they had to buy all of this mineralized water. And that's really where Santavia came to be. It's actually based on Japanese technology. And the Japanese have been using mineralized water filters for a long time. And so they uh, met with some suppliers and created this product to bring over. The first product was called the Gravity Water System. Um, and they, uh, there's a store here locally, just a small health food store. And they went and dropped off six of these machines, six of them. And then Dolly, the owner of this store, called them back the next week and said, you need to send me more. Like, I need more of these. I've sold them. I'm sold out. And they said, oh, wow, maybe there's something here. So that's how they started. They, that's, they brought in the first pallet and then the first container and Santavia was born. Um, and today, Unreal. David doesn't suffer from acid reflux. So uh, super effective. That's super cool. Talk to me a little bit about, too, just the general, like I feel like in the West Coast, Vancouver, Victoria, we're probably blessed with like pretty good tap water, I think, as far as it goes. But there are places in the world that like, like ta the tap water probably isn't as drinkable as, as they say it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. And a lot of people say, especially in Vancouver, we're from Vancouver. Uh, I'm born and raised in Vancouver. And I often hear, oh, I don't need a water filter. Uh, our, our water's fantastic here. And you know what? We are blessed uh, in Vancouver that we do have uh, a good stable source of water. And you know what? You can drink tap water and you're not going to die. You're not going to get cholera um, and have some GI awful issue that's going to lay you up for a week or, or possibly kill you, right? Um, and yes, that's true. However, all water, no matter where you are, is treated with a disinfectant, uh, chlorine, usually sometimes, uh, different types of chlorine, bromine. Um, so that chlorine is very good at killing things like bacteria, parasites, these, uh, cholera as an example, what I, which is what I brought up. Um, these bacteria and parasites that would really harm you. However, that same chemical disinfectant that is killing these bacteria and parasite while the water is coming from the distribution center to your tap is still affecting your gut. It's killing your healthy gut flora. Um, and there is uh, research and this epidemiological research. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's hard to find really good research. Um, <laughs> however, um, it does show that it can cause an increase of cancer in your kidneys. Um, and those are actually um, basically come from these byproducts that come from chlorine. They're called trihalomethanes. So these, this chlorine, when it reacts with organic matter, um, it creates these byproducts, trihalomethanes. And these trihalomethanes are very inflammatory. And so when you drink these THMs, these byproducts of chlorine, they go into your body and they wreak havoc. And all water, even in Vancouver, we have chlorine in our water and we also have these trihalomethanes. If you chlorinate your water, you have THMs, you have trihalomethanes. And so, well, yes, we do have good water. It's also chlorinated um, and uh, that's not healthy for you. So if you are interested in doing something really easy to prevent, uh, you know, to have the best quality water that you could possibly have, want to make an easy change, water filtration makes a ton of sense and specifically point of use water filtration, right? Water comes down, at least here in Vancouver, we have these huge mountains, uh, you, you were talking, Eric, you sometimes ski on them, shredding the slopes down those mountains, and uh, the water collects there. We have reservoirs and dams, and it comes down and goes into a water processing facility, and that's where we're filtering the water first and then adding chlorine. 
Um, and that chlorine then travels over hundreds of kilometers of, of infrastructure pipes that may not have been changed in 40, 50 years. And who knows what it picks up, right? Um, so yeah. point of use water filtration, I do recommend uh, um, that, you, that you would use that. It's just uh, It also mind. just invests it- – it, it's peace of mind. It also like it, it's an investment in your how much you're going to drink water. Like if you're committing to drink water, it's nice to have, uh, a, you know, a source of it that you're feeling good about, that tastes good, that is easily accessible, that's the right temperature. It just makes it easier to drink more. So I've I've been a big fan. Yeah, I, I love to hear that. Yeah, um, great tasting water is so much easier to drink, and that's another benefit. You know. All health benefits aside, when you have Santavia water and you're drinking Santavia water, because we've worked with water sommeliers and wine sommeliers in the past to try and perfect how many minerals we're adding to the water, it tastes so much better. It's smooth, and that's because we're slightly raising the pH when we're adding these alkali minerals like calcium, magnesium, and potassium, and that's going to help you drink more water, get your family to drink more water, and it is one of the best things you can do for your health. So uh, drink more water. All right. Yeah. Are you sold? We've geeked. <laughs> I'm sold. And we've geeked yeah. out on, on H2O enough. Let's talk back to business here. So you, yeah. th- you've got the five units that sell out right away because this is an interesting product that would require like not everyone knows their water needs to be filtered. Then not everyone needs to know that they're over filtering. Their, not everyone knows that they're over filtering their water. So there's probably a lot of education mm-hmm. when it comes to selling a product like this. Talk about the education piece in selling Santavia. Totally. Yeah, it is an education product. You know, it's not uh, a t-shirt that uh, you just look at it and you say, oh, that's that's cool. I want to put that on. I, I want to uh, align myself with that brand. It requires education. And that really goes back uh, to, to uh, harkens back to how the business started, right? So um, Wellspring Health was the very first retail store that, w- that we started with. And we have a fantastic distributor here in, in Western Canada called Ecotrend. So Ecotrend is a health and wellness distributor, and they have a network of health and wellness stores right across Canada. Um, and that's how the business started, because what we found for this product is when you get it into a small retail store um, and you educate that retail store as to the benefits of drinking water, um, basically, um, they can then educate the customer. And there are a lot of people that are looking for healthy healthy changes that they can make to their to their diet, to their hydration. Um, and it is an education product and that was just the, the best avenue for us. You know, everybody was, was interested in alkaline water at the time. It is alkaline water. However, the benefit actually comes from the mineralization, um, that, that is in the water. Um, and so that was just the, the best power move by my parents, uh, you know, finding that yeah. distributor. Giving people the hands-on experience with the product too, a bit helps mm-hmm. like tasting it, like just really being able to experience it firsthand. is probably a big part of it in those early mm-hmm. days. Yeah, and we have a network now of hundreds of retail stores across Canada, um, and Very they do cool. really well. They still continue to put a ton of platforms into the market, and it's just like such an incredible partner Ecotrend has been to Santapia over the over the past uh, you know fifteen years. And that's just pitching them. That's just like coming like that's just pitching them the same way you're pitching us on the product essentially. And they're like, "Wow, I love love that as an option in my totally. store." Yeah, and and you know what, a big. Um, a big part of it. So John is the owner of Ecotrend. John uh, grew up in Japan, actually. Um, okay. So he's Canadian, but uh, he, basically he was in Japan for a while. And so when he saw this product and knew that, found out that it used Japanese technology and he tasted the water, um, he was just completely in love, fell in love with the product. And uh, the limited launch at first did really, really well. And um, now I think we're, you know, one of their top three or four brands. So uh, yeah, it does That's really amazing. well there. Yeah. And then, okay, talk to me about D 2 C going to the going to the D 2 C market with the product. How how what's been your strategy to go to market with with digital ads and Santavia? Totally, yeah. So digital has been a big transition for us. We were we used to use um, big commerce. I don't know if you're familiar okay. with big commerce. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we used them, um, and we never really did a lot. We like when the business first started. In 2008, I think we launched our online store probably around like 2010, um, and we would we would move like you know four or five orders a day, pretty small volumes, you know. But online wasn't really happening yet. Yet, you know, people. I remember the most common question that we would receive from customers is they were worried about putting their credit card onto onto the website. Um, oh wow! Onto Big Commerce, which I find really funny, right? So what they would do is they would phone in. And then they would provide their credit card to, you know, a customer service oh, yeah. rep. 
Um, and you know, thinking about that now, it's like actually the, the less secure thing to do, right? You want to enter it d directly into a PCI compliant payment processors system, right? Yeah. Uh, but nobody knew that. So we started off with a direct to consumer website and then um, in 2019, we switched from big commerce to Shopify. You know, I could tell that's where the innovation was happening. Um, they had so many apps available. And so we launched there and then bam, COVID hit. So, um, it was like kind of perfect timing for us to have moved our website because as soon as everybody was locked down, everyone was shopping online and we had this brand spanking new website that was just like raring to go rebranded. The processes were dialed on the back end. Everything was integrated, um, with our inventory management system. And so we just took off in 2019 online. Um, and at the same time we're working with, um, you know, some ad agencies to try and, uh, really start to drive traffic direct to consumer, uh, D to C through Shopify. Um, and, you know, have struggled through that for a little bit, but recently found pilot house with, we partnered with you guys in 2021, I think, uh, late 2021. And, uh, that's just been fantastic for us. So our D to C business has actually eclipsed our retail business now, uh, just because we've been selling and, and growing so much online, um, driven by our direct to consumer website and also Amazon. Very cool. What's the split between the D2C website and Amazon? Um, D2C website and Amazon is about 60, 40 Amazon to our, to our websites. We actually do sell more on Amazon. We've had a few just really kick ass products on Amazon that have taken off that we didn't really expect to take off. One of them is our bath filter. Um, you know, it did, it did okay in retail. Um, it did okay online and then it just got picked up on Amazon USA couple of years ago and um it's just been it's been going crazy so uh, yeah that's a that's a, a part of water that you don't you don't think about we we bathe that we shower in, in water every day and if you're being if you should probably have that filtered too if you're being a purist right because your, your skin is your largest organ absorbing all that as well totally yeah and chlorine dries out your skin like crazy if you've ever had a, a lengthy shower in chlorinated water you come out and your your skin is dry um your hair might be oh, yeah. dry um, so bathing and showering with a shower filter, a uh, bath filter is, um, is, is super important. It is your largest organ. I, um, am a huge fan of, uh, you know, bath and shower products. And that's a, a, an area of Santavia where we're really trying to expand over the next little bit. We, yeah. We're going to make that just a, a killer line for Santavia. So, so keep your eyes out on a bath and shower at Santavia. Hey, d to c you did it. You crushed out yet another Black Friday and Cyber Monday. As you reap the benefits of your hard work and enormous ad spend throughout this holiday season, take some time to get reflective about your marketing stack and ask yourself, is 2024 the year you make SMS your number one revenue channel? SMS is engaging, intimate, immediate. Best of all, it's owned media and it just works. Talk to Postscript, the preferred SMS revenue platform for over 12,000 forward-thinking D2C brands including D2C podcast favorites, Feastables, Olipop, Death Wish Coffee, and more. I've known Postscript's founder, Alex, for years and can tell you he's built Postscript to be fully customer-focused and always innovating great revenue additive products like SMS sales and fondue cashback. If you want to make more revenue with SMS in 2024, start having one-to-one -one conversations with your customers at scale with Postscript. To learn more and for a special offer for D2C podcast listeners, visit postscript.io slash DTC. Let's talk a little bit about Las Vegas. You you weren't there, but your team joined us at our mm. mastermind in Las Vegas and was brave enough to sign up for a hot seat, which was, <laughs> yeah. I think, it, it was it was fantastic. You came up, uh, pulled your website up, and we're we're looking at, at at some various things. Let's talk about that process, about what we what what the audience had to say about the website, and kind of some of the changes you've made since. What how, what was that experience filtered down to you uh, as someone who wasn't able to attend? Yeah, it was really, I had some huge FOMO missing that one. <laughs> I was on a, a business trip out in, in China and um, yeah, I, I saw the video afterwards of the hot seat and it, they did really well. Graham and Emily, um, so Emily's our marketing manager and Graham's our digital manager. And uh, I think they, they uh, really carried the torch, you know, really well. But the feedback was um, people didn't get it. People didn't get why you needed um, water filtration and um you know, it's a, it's a great question. You know, why do you need water filtration? And, and we were the, basically saying, yeah, I remember looking at water. your website. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember looking at your web- we were looking at your website and we saw all of the features, all of the technical features that you get and what you're what you're removing and what you're adding back in. Mm-hmm. But we were like, there's some plain language missing about like why people want these things. They don't want mm-hmm. they want a two inch mm-hmm. hole. They don't want a two inch drill bit, right? And I, I think there was a lot of like just sort of like subtle reframing to be like here's actually what people want from this water. They, they want to be, they, they don't want all the bad things in their water. They, they don't want fluoride or they don't want antidepressants or whatever in their water, right? So really focusing on the, the pain points a little bit more. Totally. And that's basically spurred some activity for us to go back and speak to our customers. And so what we found through speaking with our customers, and we wanted to speak with our, our most recent customers, too, because what we actually notice, we, we do surveys, big surveys every single year. We go and ask all of our customers, you know, uh, why did you buy Santavia? Where did you buy Santavia? All the, all the common questions. And what we've noticed actually, as there's been this transition to digital is our customers getting a lot younger. So it used to be in 2008, our primary customer was kind of in that 55 to 64. And now it's 34 uh, to 44, you know, so we're quite a bit younger. Um, so we learned about that. Um, we surveyed a lot of those customers and we asked them, what's the number one thing you care about? Why did you buy a Santavia water filter? And it was health and wellness focused. You know, they really wanted to do something for their body that was persistent over time. And with that, we then changed our value proposition. So we spent quite a bit of time. It's, it's funny to work so long on something that's like two sentences long, (laughs) but we did, we spent like probably a month and a half working on this value prop and then turn that value proposition for Santa Via, that redefined value proposition for Santa Via into a problem solution uh, presentation. And then we brought that problem solution right across our, the front page of our website. So now basically when you go to our website, you're, you're hit with the problem solution and the value prop. So you really understand that hey, this is a water filter that is not only filtering these bad things that are in your water, but we're adding in healthy minerals and that's going to make you feel better. It's going to reduce fatigue. It's going to reduce brain fog, really focusing on the the actual benefits to your body in the near term uh, that come with drinking Santavia water. So that was, it was eye-opening for us and uh, a great exercise for our team to take part in was was that uh, Las Vegas event. And how's it work? so well, like you wouldn't believe it. Um, at the same time, so that value prop change at the same time that we did that, we also signed up for Shopify plus and Shopify okay. plus comes with this tool called audiences. Audiences essentially looks at your previous consumers and goes and finds other consumers that look like those. So essentially they're lookalike audiences, but driven by your specific data and Shopify has fantastic data, right? Anytime you shop on a Shopify store, that's all getting pulled into Santa Via's audience now which I love. So that change to our homepage plus Shopify audiences has uh, increased. We actually had to reforecast Q4 because we've been doing so well. Yeah. That's so, super neat. And so, so yeah. audience, I haven't, I haven't talked about audiences on Shopify before. Do they go out on meta and good? They go out to all the different traffic platforms to find them. Where, where are they sourcing the new customers who are like your old customers? Yeah, good question. So what Shopify audiences does is they look at your purchasers, so your direct-to-consumer purchasers, and then they have records of, let's say there's another completely unrelated brand. I think you guys, do you work with Bushbomb? Maybe you do. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if, if uh, our customer goes and shops on Bushbomb's website, and then there, Bushbomb has a few other consumers that have not shopped on Santa Fe's website, they'll say, hey, you should advertise to those Bushbomb customers because they look like that customer who shopped on both of your websites and oh, cool. they're, they're interested in, in health and wellness products. And so then basically you create the, these audiences and you pull them through to Facebook, TikTok, you know, the big, the big, uh, advertising platforms, Google. And, and, um, yeah, it's like, it, it definitely increased the ROAS. Yeah. That's really cool. And your customers are then opted in for Bush bomb as well, right? It's like, do you, do you have to opt into that or is everyone on, on platform automatically opted into that? Yeah, if you know, sh- there's it's it's anonymized, so we don't know who we're advertising to, right? That, that's yeah. how, how that's how Facebook got away with it for years, but uh, now with yeah. the iOS update, Apple's no longer sharing that data with Facebook. But totally, this is 
Shopify's data. They own it because you're you're checking out on on their PCI compliance payment processor, right? So they they know who, exactly who you are. Very cool. Um, so let's let's talk Amazon a little bit. Like, what has you mentioned? Some surprising products popped off on Amazon. Mm-hmm. What else about your Amazon approach has has paid dividends and worked really well? Yeah. So, well, this is kind of a, a like a funny story, um, and something that that's works really well for us is previously we had been on Amazon vendor. So Amazon vendor was the largest e-commerce portion of our business. And, and when uh, I joined in, in 2018, I know it's a family business, but I was, I was off in uh, the UK working for a, a tech company out there. Um, and I came back and joined the family business and found and, and dug into the data a little bit. And I wanted to see where our money was coming from, where people were shopping. And I found out that we had this Amazon vendor business that was doing really well, um, and it was it was strange who was who was actually selling those those products to Amazon vendors. So actually, we were selling to our distributor, who was selling to some savvy uh, retailers, who were then selling to Amazon vendor, who was then selling to our customer. There were so many middlemen in between, <laughs> right? And I, yeah. and and so that was crazy. And not just that, but Amazon vendor, it's a it's a first party relationship. They buy the inventory. From you, it's not like Amazon Seller Central, where you can sign inventory to Amazon Seller Central, and you therefore have control over pricing. So Amazon vendors buying this inventory from you, they get to do what whatever they want to do, including control the price. And we're such a small player, uh, you know. Uh, pl- speaking of Amazon, they're huge, they're a behemoth, right? So they really don't care if you're doing less than like probably fifty million dollars a year on Amazon. They don't, they don't even talk to you. So. Um, basically we took that business back and we moved it over to seller central because that same business that was being sold through our distributor was also wreaking havoc across our retail line because Amazon vendor was undercutting all these retail retailers on price. So we took that back, we moved it over over to seller central and then we started to consign inventory, control the price, create that price floor with, with map agreements. And then, um, start advertising. And so we didn't know anything about advertising on Amazon. So we, uh, that's the relationship where the relationship with pilot house began. So we onboarded with your team and what a team I got to say, just, just really, really great guys. Um, you know, Clifford and Brad, those guys are, and Isaac just doing, doing wonders for us. And we saw probably like 30, 40% growth in the first year working with you guys. And so it's been phenomenal for us. And, and it doesn't seem like it's stopped. And the coolest thing about Amazon, and the, the thing I really like about Amazon and, and how it's changed over the past three or four years. When Amazon first came out, everybody was worried, this is going to be cannibalization. We're going to cannibalize the sales that we would have got to our direct-to-consumer business, and we're going to cannibalize our retailer sales. And for sure, there's a little bit of that happening. But at the end of the day, the consumer wants to shop where the consumer wants to shop, right? We, we live in an omni-channel world. We hear that word all the time, omni-channel. And the, that was true for a while, but now people are going and doing research on Amazon. That's where they're actually discovering your product. And so you can actually use Amazon as this fantastic brand awareness tool. And that's why we've leaned so heavily into advertising on on Amazon, just because we're acquiring so many net new customers. It's phenomenal. We were looking at their quarterly, actually Clifford just did a little write-up that I think that's going in uh, Monday's newsletter about their quarterly results at Amazon and just how fast their ad business is growing versus all other aspects of their business. And it, it, it just, you think about it, it's just for them, it's pure profit. They just can kind of, yeah. uh, you know, create this inventory and, and sell it. And I think that's, and that and working with Clifford all the time, having him come on the podcast all the time, like this, he, I, I think, I think that that team just really understand is really leading the vanguard of Amazon ads and like really how to make things happen. I think, I think a lot of people back in the day were more, you know, set it and forget it when it came to Amazon, like, okay, well, it's a new distribution center, but it's really, yeah. How to be strategic with the ads to like create that momentum on the organic platform and have it really be complimentary has been mm-hmm. amazing to see them do that with multiple brands. Yeah. Yeah. It's been so Very good for cool. us. And then, so I'm curious too. So you've got, you know, I'm on the, uh, I forget what it's called, but you're the Mina filter, I think. So I'm mm-hmm. on the, like the, the, the handheld Brita thing. Yep. And then you've got the, you've got the, the, the water stations as well. Uh, talk to me a little bit about your retention and how, what, what strategies have worked best for moving people through your multiple products and up your product ladder. 
Yeah, totally. So you have our the Santa Via Mina pitcher, which is definitely entry level, sixty dollar price point Canadian, fifty dollars US. And then we have that gravity water system, which is a countertop water system, which retails for around two hundred and twenty dollars. And we find that both customers are great customers. They both customer sets will stay with the brand for on average three and a half years. You know, they'll spend around one hundred and twenty dollars a year with us. Um, they're very sticky customers and some of them a lot longer. Um, so whether or not they're a Mina Pitcher customer or a Gravity Water System customer, we're not actually actively trying to upsell them from a Mina to a Gravity Water System because what we we did try that. But what we found is that a lot of the selection of the platform comes down to your life circumstance. What kind of home do you live in? Are you living in the city or are you living in the suburbs? You know, do you have a lot of countertop space or uh, do you not? Do you like to put your water in the fridge? Uh, all these sort of questions really lead to the kind of platform that you would buy. And we find that once people taste our water, they love our water. You can't go back. It, it tastes yeah. so much better. You can't start drinking tap water after because it, it, it's funny. When you drink tap water, you just become desensitized to the amount of chlorine in the water. However, when mm. you drink Santavia water, you know, drink it for a few months, Eric, and then go back and have a glass of tap water. Or maybe you'll be at a restaurant and they'll have taken some tap water uh, and put it on your table. It tastes awful. You know, it, it, yeah. it really tastes it's bad. Funny and I, we've talked about this and I, I jumped on the, uh, the my this naturopath recommend I get on the zero water, which I know is a contentious issue. And it literally has a little filter on it that tells me exactly it's got zero anything. It takes out mm-hmm. all the, the good minerals. And I, and having tried uh, Santa Via, it definitely tastes better. It definitely tastes better to have like all the natural minerals back back in there. Totally. And that's the way nature intended. You're not supposed to have water with nothing in it. I always like when I people talk about zero water and TDS, you know, TDS is, is their big thing, total dissolved solids, how much stuff is in your water. And when you have minerals in your water, it shows that there's stuff in your water. This TDS meter goes crazy, uh, but that's good. I always ask people, would you go to the, if, there were, if you went to the grocery store and you're going to buy some food, would you want to buy the demineralized food or would you want the food with minerals in it? Of course not. You know, you're obviously going to buy the mineralized food. That's the same thing with water. You should have the mineralized water. Um, so yeah, zero water is kind of like said to be as arch nemesis. You know, we, we're doing the exact opposite thing. We're both filtering the water, but we're adding a ton of minerals and zero water is trying to get them all out. And I, and I bet you're in, in your retail stores, there's a lot probably selling them side by side. There's probably a lot, there's probably a lot of, of, and, and I, but I, that's probably great in that environment where they're, where the salespeople are able to say, here are your options. You can go zero or you can go this. Like, I can't imagine that most people put with that you know, paradigm in front of them that they wouldn't want the minerals, you know? Yeah. It's funny. You know, most natural health retailers will not carry zero water. I'm, I'm shocked. Ah. I'm actually shocked that your naturopath recommended zero water. I would love to have your naturopath name and just give them a quick okay. call because I can convert them. I definitely can. I will. Um, but in some big box retailers, like we're in London drugs, uh, here in Western Canada and there are, you know, they've got over a hundred stores and they carry Brita and they carry zero water and they carry Santa Via. And so that's the place where the consumer is really, um, you know, they they have to make the decision. Do they want um, this zero water? And and they're coming for a water filter and there's nothing in zero water. So, you know, that seems appealing. There's the Brita, which is the household name. Everyone knows Brita and there's some trust there. And then there's Santa Via. And it does require education. And so our box, our retail box, really focuses on educating the consumer as to why you would want Santa Via. And, and the cool thing about Santa Via um, versus Zero Water, it's just, there's no difference. I mean, we're, we're less expensive than Zero Water. We do way more than Zero Water. Um, there's, there's really no competition there. However, with Brita, there can be some competition because it's less expensive usually on shelf, right? You'll go mm-hmm. in and you'll buy a water pitcher from Brita and you might pay $35 with a filter. However, the long-term cost of Santa Via versus a Brita is actually less expensive for Santa Via because our filters last twice as long. So our filters lasting mm. 300 liters versus theirs only lasts 150 liters. So on shelf, it looks less expensive, but once you do the math, ours is actually less expensive. So um, sneak, th- and you explain that you got to explain that on the box, but that's it's it's always hard because customers are, are looking yeah. for that immediate gratification, right? For sure. Looking for yeah. the exactly. That's interesting. Uh, so where, so first of all, Q4, I want to talk about your big plans, but like what, what are you most excited about for Q4? Is this going to be Q, uh, Santa Via's biggest Q4 ever? 
For sure it will, 100%. We just did a uh, our summer sale, like our Amazon. Uh, Amazon has a Prime Day in July, and we also do a summer sale at, last, at the same time. And it was bigger than our Q4 last year by, by a, wow. a margin. So, you know, the fact that we're having bigger sales in the summertime than we were last Q4 just shows the trajectory that we're on. We're, you know, we're crushing it this year and our team is crushing it. Uh, everybody from our fulfillment team to our sales and marketing team, we're like leaps and bounds ahead of where we were last year. So Q4 this year is going to be huge. For sales, we really focus on new customer acquisition. So how many people can we get into the brand at a time where you know friction is low, everybody is excited about the sales, they're in the mood to buy and shop. So uh, we ha we'll have some great deals on all of, our, all of our platforms. We always try and give a, a really tasty deal to any customer that's, uh, that's uh, interested in the brand. So we've been working to build up our email list, building up our audiences on, on Meta and TikTok, <coughs> um, working with a lot of influencers as well. So we're, we're primed for just a fantastic Q4. Um, and then heading into Q1, that's the big thing. New year, is, new you. you. Know, new year, new you. <laughs> yeah, right? That's right. <laughs> we've run that sale many, many times. Um, new year, new year. But, but we're actually also expanding to the UK. So that's something we're excited oh, cool. to be doing yeah, through Amazon. Um, and then we'll follow up with a direct to consumer website pretty soon afterwards. If we were to give you a $50,000 grant to be used in Q4, where would you plug that in, in your, uh, in your distribution system? Yeah. Good question. Marketing? Um, I would go all in on influencers, um, and some big influencers because we're an education product. Um, it can be hard to get the message across to individuals, um, what we have found is that working with influencers who have a trusted audience, it, when you can work with that influencer and they internalize your message and they're aligned with you, that's the big thing. If you're in, if you find an influencer who truly likes your product and is aligned with you, it pays off in spades. We have some influencers that we we have found. You know, you'll you'll we'll work with twenty influencers and we'll have two that just like do an incredible job, and then we'll continue to work with those two influencers forevermore, and they just are incredible conversion machines. So I would go after uh, a, a couple big influencers. That's what I would want to do. Are they health? Are they health focused, health and beauty? Or like what's what's the niche that resonates best? Yeah, health and wellness is definitely, definitely the influencer. So they might be interested in natural products. They might actually be interested in lifestyle like uh, yoga influencers. We've done uh, pretty well with um, moms actually do really well because, you know, Lead is one of the worst things that you can have for a child, especially if you live on the East Coast. There's a lot of lead in the water. So Montreal, uh, New York, these places are affected specifically because their infrastructure is so old. They used to use leaded pipes, if you can believe it, leaded solder to join pipes in, in all these homes. And so moms um, are super interested in, in taking care of their, their babies, no, no kidding. And, and this is a fantastic way to do it. Amazing. I think I, one of the other ideas that came out of our hot seat was uh, live water taste tests for socials on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Have you have you done have you done any uh, any like, gorilla style water taste testing? <laughs> uh, we have done a little bit of that. A fun one that's notable and that I remember really well is we went to a a bar, a wine bar, and we worked with their water sommelier or their wine sommeliers, and we had them do taste tests just to show that oh, a refined palate can choose uh, the best water all the time. So we did it with Santa Via water and tap water, but then we started to make it a little bit more difficult. So we would do it with uh, Santa Via and a few different bottled waters, like Santa Via versus Fiji water. Uh, I actually quite like Fiji water. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. However, because it's mineralized. However, you know, you're shipping it all the way from Fiji. It's super expensive and bad for the planet. Um, however, the water itself tastes really good. And it's, it's crazy that some of these people with very refined palates, uh, a more refined palate than I have, can just pick out subtle notes uh, in, in water, just like they would in wine. And they nailed it. Like they got, they could tell what water was. Or they, yeah. They were... I was a bit worried, right? Cause we were filming it all for social media and I was like, Oh, what if they don't get it right? But, uh, yeah, there was no issue yeah. there. They, they got it right. Uh, every time they struggled a little bit between like the low end bottled water. So like when we were doing like Costco water versus a Desani water, we would tell them like, you know, one's, yeah. got, one's a little bit more salty and that's, uh, that's going to be the Desani. Can you pick out which is which they can't do that. But, um, um, yeah, it, it was, uh, it was pretty fun. 
super neat. So how big, uh, what are your goals with Santa Via over the next couple of years? I know you're, uh, you're, you're, you're director of e-commerce right now, right? And I, but you're probably, you're in the, in the family business with, a uh, with opportunity, upward mobility. What are your plans with Santa Via in the next uh, couple of years? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's a small business. So director of sales and marketing. I also do product, do a lot of operation, you know, many hats, but, uh, yeah, um, moving on up pretty soon here. Uh, my sister's pregnant, so uh, I think my, my mom's interested in uh, less time in the office and more time with the family pretty soon here. But uh, no announcements made yet. Um, but, yeah, our, we're going to go all in on, on e-com this year in 2024. That's really the push, and we're expanding to the UK, like I had mentioned. And I want to build, it, build it, just this killer process to acquire net new customers and and know exactly how many customers we're going to require when we invest, you know, a hundred thousand dollars in a region, you know? Um, so that's what we're really focused on. We have some exciting new products. We actually just launched our glass water system. So we have a tabletop system that's plastic and that was our legacy flagship product. And, uh, just, just yesterday we announced that we're launching this glass water system. So I'm really excited about that. It's going to do so well. Uh, the influencers are already going crazy for it. So, um, yeah, it, it actually will be for sale uh, on November 2nd, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to get that one. I, I like the picture, but I my zero water is a tabletop. I'm, I'm, I, with the volumes of water I'm drinking, I need a tabletop one, but I don't like that mine is plastic. So I'm going mm-hmm. I'm gonna, to I'm gonna invest in the, the Santa Via glass si- Yeah, we'll talk. System. Yeah, definitely. I'll get you one. Let's go. Awesome. And if you're listening to this podcast and you want to get more delicious mineralized water uh, back in your life, you got to go to santavia.com. Check out their new website and, uh, and you know, have, have a look at, at how well they're storytelling there. Uh, and man, Matthew, thanks for coming on the podcast today. We're going to have to, we're going to have to stay in touch and connect as you, uh, as you dominate this water world. Thanks so much, Eric. Thanks for the, the opportunity. It was super fun to come on the podcast and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's stay in touch. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. If you're not a subscriber to our newsletter, you can do that right now at directtoconsumeralloneword.co. I'm Eric Dick, and this has been the D2C Podcast. We'll see you next time.